How you doing folks? Uh, welcome back to Irish and Scottish Fishing and Fly Time. So today I'm just going to show you a quick pattern that uh, so I came up with this pattern a couple of months back and on the on the purposes that I was going to fish it towards the end of the season because of the purple. But I was out the other night, I was out fishing with my mate who's quite new to salmon fishing. Um, he came up to my box and he liked the look of it and he put it on and within 20 minutes of fishing down a pool he ended up having a, a twin nine and a half inch salmon on so that's about ten and a half pounds obviously safely returned but that was his first salmon on the fly so from that day this fly is now going to be called the latent shrimp so it has worked as i say i've witnessed it working two days ago so i'm quickly going to show you how i tied this up and and what you're thinking because it's got purple should be fished towards the end of the season but i will definitely be fishing this quite a lot over the next couple of times that i'm out so I'll just get into it and show you how to tie it up. So, to start things off, I'm going to use a B280 size 6. Now, I was using, it was using a size 6 as well, and it was low water, so it just shows you a big fly can just, just work as good as every other day. So, I'll just get that in there nice and tight. There we go. Should be tight enough now. Big hook takes a bit of pulling sometimes. So the thread I'm going to be using for this is Unifred EO in red. So just to start things off, folks, just start with a layer of thread down the hook. Just about there, and then come in with your trusty stand mate and snip it. Right, still, when you're using this bigger hook, sometimes it doesn't sit on well enough. All I'm going to do now is just run the thread down to the bottom of the hook. Right. This pattern I would usually put a tag on it, but the one that Leighton caught on didn't have a tag. So I'm coming straight in with Golden Present breast, and I've already prepped it. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to tie this in to the bottom with the, uh, with the point at the bottom. Pointing down up to the top of the hook. And then I'm going to back off on the threads, back down the hook, and then come up again. Pulling the excess material down and put a couple of turns in in front of it. And then just come in and snip off the excess. Like so. Now because this is the front, this is the front of the hackle, what you want to do is you want to rotate it and pull it back. So the front of the hackle is what it's going to be for your tail. I'm just going to shape that. I'm going to move my bobbin out of the way. I'm going to try and get a free turn, free turn finish, or well, free turn hackle in at the bottom. So there's one. Each time I put a turn in, just like Fritz, I'm just working all the all the materials back. Now, as as you're tying this on, it will. It will not like it might not look like it's sitting right, but don't worry too much about it. As I say, when you once you've tied it in and got it all set, you're going to tidy it all up. It'll, it'll look well then. So there we go, there's three turns in now. I'm just going to again work all the materials out. And then I'm going to come up with my bobbin, up with my thread. I'm going to do two turns over the stock, like so. And give it a little bit of a pull. And then I'm going to pull everything back, the back portion of the hook, and then I'm going to start. Building up a nice tight turns. Like so. And then I'm going to come in and snip off the excess. And then before you carry on with the tie and the fly, grab all the materials. Can be a little bit fiddly this to get them all out of the way, but for the purposes of this, I just come in and moisten. And all, all the moisten does is just it just keeps the material out of the way till you get it all tidied up. There we go. That's it in now. Nice good tail portion. I'm going to then build up a nice red portion here, and this is going to be my red butt. Now, the pattern itself, you know, as I said, I've came up with it. You can put in red floss here if you want, just to give it that bit of a rich colour, but. I find with a red thread, the oh, if you just build up a nice red, 
hold up a nice couple of turns, it'll give it a nice rich red colour. And all you want to do then is just run your thread up to the top of the hook then, start building up your actual body. And because I'm using 8 it it'll take a couple of times up and down, but I wouldn't worry too much about it. Just take your time building up the body. You don't need to worry about touching turns so much. It's all it is is just giving you a nice even body. Because for this pattern, I'm going to be bringing red holograph. Oh, sorry, I'm going to be bringing holographic gold up it, so it's going to cover it all off anyway. There we go. Just going to stop there. And then I'm going to be coming in with my holographic. So I'm using medium holographic. I'm going to grab quite a good. A good portion of it because I'm going to go up and down the hook twice with this. So I'll catch this in, just catch it into the bottom of the hook. Like so, put that away out of the way, and then I'm going to come in then with my rib just to give it a bit of protection. So my rib's just uh, vineyard French wire gold, and it's quite small. And you don't have to rib it if you want, but just gives it that little bit more protection you can rub it with a thicker gold wire if you want if you've got it but for me I'm just using the fine stuff I'm trying to stick to what I tied the original pattern in as I say I, I hadn't actually named the pattern yet because I hadn't caught on it and then when my mate my friend was out fishing he's caught on it I tailed the fish for him and then I said from that day on this fly, this fly is going to be called the Leighton Shrimp now the style of this pattern, it is quite flame flurry, but because I've got like the an Irish style shrimp pattern at the back end with the golden pheasant, I've decided to stick with the latent shrimp. And he's happy with me calling it. So just gonna come in with my trusty Sally Hansen. This is just gonna secure me a holographic. And this is my old stuff. So it's quite thick. Then I'm gonna come up with my holographic and I'm gonna try my best to do touch and turns and leaving a red butt section at the back. Right, the first time you come up it, don't worry too much, because we're going to be coming up and down the fly twice. So, and as you're working your way up and down it, make sure you keep tension. Because if you let go of this, it can unravel and then you'll have to start again. And you see I'm missing bits there, but I'm allowing it, because I'm coming up and down it twice. I'm going to pick all them excess bits up when I come back down the hook. Even if you miss a miss a few anyway, they go the red coming through, they could help so this pattern anyway. I'm just gonna work my way up work my way up and say the gold holographic. I like I like the gold holographic, it gives it changes colour as it's coming through the water. Makes the fly look very well. Two turns over the top. Pull it back. And two turns over just to start tidy up. I'm just tidying up here now, so that's going to give me an indication where I'm going to tie in my wing. Before I get to there, I'll snip that. And then I'll come up with my rib. Nice evenly spaced rib. Just working my way up. Again, maintaining tension. Because if you let go of this, it can unravel. So just working my way up. The flies just moved there a little bit. Just working my way up. I say don't worry about counting the turns I say as long as you keep them nice and evenly spaced it'll give you a good fly when you've finished it two turns over and then a couple of turns over the front and then all I'm going to do is maintain tension in the bobbin I'm going to helicopter that off all right quick tidy up now in readiness for my uh, wing there we go so for the wing of this I'm using uh, orange bucktail now it is the, what I was saying about the uh, it's going to be it's kind of like a flame four pattern because the wing is going to hang over the axe will be longer than the tail so I've already prepped a bit already I've prepped ready for it for this pattern so you're going to want it just hanging over, so about half an inch over. I'm going to come in, nice loose turn at the top, 
then shape it to make sure it's on, on the top of the hook and then tighten down. Making sure you're happy with the position. Tighten down again, making sure you're happy. Give the wing a little persuasion up. A couple more turns and then you're going to come in and snip off your excess. There's a couple of excess fibres that I've missed there, but we're not too bored about them. We're going to start to tidy that up. Now the flash for this, usually on most salmon patterns I would put two strands over, but this pattern in particular had four strands and it had four strands of crystal flash peacock. So I'm just going to grab, going to grab two strands, two strands out of it, and then all I'll do, so I'll just hold them. Around the top of the hook, and then I'll bring them up to the top of the hook and then wind back onto them, like so. Still holding on to them, I'm going to come in and snip them the same length of the tail. A little bit of a tidy up before I bring in my hackle. And then, if you want, so it stays out of the way, moisten your fingers and just rotate it into the wing. I'll just and I'll just keep it into the wing. Just until you're finished tying the fly. Now the hack of this, I think it is the same in most of the patterns as a short vineyard short cock hackle and it's in purple. So I'm just I've already prepped it. So you want the fibres to be roughly touching the barb of the hook. So I'm just gonna bring in the hackle. You can use hackle pliers if you want. But I'm just going to, oh, sorry, it's just moved. Just going to catch this into the top of the hook. I'm going to work back to where I want my hackle to start. And then I'm going to work back forward, lifting that back a couple of turns behind it. And then I'm going to come in and snip away that excess. So starting the hackle, all I'm going to do because this is the shiny portion on this side, I'm going to rotate it, rotate the fibre around and then pull in the shiny portion so this is the portion that's going to be from the hackle, it's going to be at the front of the, front of the fly so you get a more vivid colour. And for this pattern, because I'm only putting the one hackle on, I'll probably put a four turn hackle on it. So I'm just starting off my hackle now. There's one, every time you put the turn in, just pull every, all the fibres back. As I say, when you start with these hackles, it might not be the best. But as you build up the hackle, it'll start taking shape and looking good. Again, you can use hackle pliers if you want. But for me, because it's quite a big hackle, I'm just using, a lot, using my hands. So there's four turns and then I will put a fifth turn in. Put in the fifth turn, pull everything back, and then all I'm gonna do now is gonna come up and put the turn over the top. More turn. Just one more to be safe. Pull everything back. Put a couple of turns in over that just to lock it off. And then with my excess, I'm gonna come in and snip my excess. Like so, before I come in for my jungle cock now, all I'm going to do, if you've looked at any of the other patterns, I'm just going to give my hackle a little bit of a shape, making sure I'm happy with it, which I am. And for the jungle cock, I've already prepped it. So jungle cock, quite a big fella on this one. You're going to want it to extend down to more or less touching the butt, the red butt of this fly. So two turns in, a little bit of shaping, a 
Come on, on the other side. Rotate the hook round. Again, I'm just going to be touching this about the length of the butt. Come on, in. hold on to that. Catch it in. Just make sure they're all the same length. Pinch. And then tighten down. Work your way down to the front of the hook. Then grab the excess stocks. Pull them back out of the way. Making sure you're not adjusting their position. Tighten down. Nudging forward. And then come in. And snip off the excess. And then do a bit of a tidy up then. As I say, once I've finished this file, I'll be tidying everything up. Lift this up. I'm just going to moisten my hands again. Get the butt fibre out of the way. Give that an RB rotate. Just to hold it up out of the position. And then just to start building up my head then. Little pinch. Hold everything down. And then... So take your time and just build yourself up a good head. Now this uh, Aero thread, like it's a, well, if you take your time with it, you will get a good rich head on this. Just taking your time, being careful you don't pinch too hard that you uh, damage your uh, jungle cock. Just working this round now, as I say, so it's nice and thin. It'll take a while just to tidy up all this head. There we go. Just a quick look over it now to make sure I've caught everything. Which I have. And I come in with my whip finish. So whip finish like all my flies, I'm gonna come in with a four turn whip finish. Just gonna work my thread back to the middle so I'm not tying the knot at the front of the hook. So four turn whip finish. One, two, three, four. A little bit of a tighten and come in again. Tighten again. Just lock off on that. Little bit of a shape, so we're happy with everything. Just gonna take this off the hook, take this off the stand, and give the uh, tail a bit of a give the tail a bit of a shape. Hook. Just make a bit of a tighten. Almost done. Then to finish the head, folks, I'm just going to come in with my super glue and all my salmon heads. Little dab on the uh, cocktail stick. And then work my way around the head. Nice and quick. Because it will dry. Just the one layer, making sure I'm not hitting the hackle, hitting the hitting the jungle cock or anything like that. Now, I know there is a there is a few excess fibres at the front, but once this is all dry, I'll be plucking them off. A little bit more glue. Just a wee dab around here, there are bits of mist, and you know you've covered it all because the whole head will go shiny. There's a wee excess fibre there sticking out, so I'm just going to come in with my tweezers. 
set that out of the way. And then let that dry for a minute and then now I'm going to come in the Thin Yards Fine Head Cement. Now, if you've watched any of my other patterns, salmon patterns, I like to put a nice coat of this on and then I will put it on my drying stand and I will put maybe four, three or four other pattern, or other coats on it once it's completely dried. If you want to get this coat on just before the super glue dries, otherwise your head will go white. Well, that's what I've found with my, it might just be because of my super glue is a bit old. But that will just give you a nice good head and a good three, three coats on it. Gives you a nice shiny head. So that's it folks, that's my Leighton, Leighton Shrimp, I, I've got it in a size 6 that I've tied on a Scandi Osprey hook, just there, and I've also tied one with quite a, a light dressed wing on a size 12, uh, sorry a size 8 B280, and I've got one here with a bit of a heavier dressed wing, and I think so it's like, have a go folks, as I say, uh, the Leighton Shrimp, you know, it, it's caught a fish. As I say, I wasn't going to fish this. I wasn't going to fish this pattern until the word towards the end of the season. But again, I'll be fishing this quite a lot now. So uh, give it a go. And if you like what like what you've seen, folks, please uh, subscribe to my channel. I've got other salmon patterns on there. I've got trout patterns, and then I know I've always said it, but when I get a chance and when I get time, I will take videos when I'm out in the, where I'm out in the water, fishing the patterns on my channel, if it's trout or if it's salmon. So. Uh, hopefully you've liked what you've seen folks and uh, please stay tuned for my next fly and because uh, there'll be another they'll be posting every Saturday now so I'll see you later folks and I'll see you at the next fly